So we met on Plenty of Fish. Uh, it's a dating website. Free dating website. Free. He, he found me because I, he, I popped up on his search. So her parameters wouldn't allow people like me, younger, <laughs> divorced, and has a kid, should have never appeared on hers. And military. And military. On mine. So it never should have appeared on hers, but somehow it popped up in the random one. And then I just started talking to her. And then I think, I don't know, somehow you asked me out on a date. Yes. And then we went on our first date. I was so, the first person he dated in like 10 in like years. Ten years. Because I had been married for 10 years. Uh -huh. and, then... and so I was so used to dating at that point in that, you know, I was, I was a pro at it. And then here he comes and he wouldn't even really look at me in the eye. Or like I would have to be the one asking all the questions. So I was like, oh no, this is just another one of those bad dates gone wrong, you know. So I was like... Might as well get drunk. <laughs> uh, after that, we drank, and then I was like, let's just go to another bar, because I think it was Friday, and I was like, might as well make the most out of this date. And so we went to another bar, and then like we played Connect Four. Yep. And then that's when our competitiveness came out. And so I wouldn't let her win. <laughs> yeah. Every time. And so, and then like I just started drinking more because I was getting frustrated that I was losing. And so. After that, we went bowling. bowling. I don't know. We just clicked. Like it was, we have so much in common that it was just Able easy. To talk about everything. Leading up to the actual proposal date, I've set up. I set up a whole bunch of things to throw her off from thinking I would ever propose to her. The first one was taking her to her favorite restaurant, which was the kitchen. So I took her there. Nothing happened. We um, went to Vegas. We went to Vegas. Did that thing. Nothing, nothing happened. happened. And then I told her I needed to go pick up a part for my mom to, just to say thank you to her. I was going to buy her a new turbo, turbo for her car. I said, oh, will you come with me? It's up in Portland. And so we get there and we pull up to the gate and she sees it and she's just like, wait, what is this? So it's a sloth sanctuary. Uh, I love sloths. Uh, and so like for my 30th birthday, we went to Costa Rica to go see sloths. But I never got to touch one or like feed them at the zoos. They're usually behind cages. So I'm like, okay. So I was like on my bucket list, I'd like to like hold one or at least touch one and feed one, you know? And so we get up and the, the gate closes and it says sloth sanctuary. And I was like, honey, I was like, the car flight's in the same place as the sloth sanctuary. He's like, no, we're not, we're not going to go watch or we're not going to go get a car part. And I was like, so I started crying because I was like, you know, this is on my bucket list. And so. He told me, you know, we're having a private tour and stuff, and so I was just super happy. They have like just like 12 or 13 of them, and you just walk into the room, and they're just all around they're you. All you chilling. To, they're just chilling. They're just with em. you. You can feed them and everything. So then he uh, asked the tour guide to take our picture, and I was like, okay, and I was feeding it, and so uh, I, she she took the camera, and then like he just got down on one knee, and I was like, I was I think I was just really confused because I'm like, what's going on? Because it was like surprise after surprise. I was like, oh my God, you know, like what's going on? And so and then I started crying. And then the sloth was trying to like attack me for the food. So oh, I was wow, like, was which, and I'm not used to rings. I don't wear rings. So I was like, which hand do you need? And he's like, the one you're feeding with. So I'm like, okay, hold on. So I fed the sloth and then proceeded to give him my hand. And then that was it. And then it was, it was the ring. So yep. with him. It was different and I had fun and so I was like, okay, you know, I want to see him again, but hopefully he's just more outgoing or more open because he was so closed off and he, you could just tell like he was just really shy and introverted and so I was like, okay, hopefully this will get better. And so he asked me on a second date and you know, that got even better and it, just, it kept on getting better. There was just something about her that was like, okay, she's different, she makes me laugh, she makes makes me happy so and it was weird that that happened all on the first date like we were able to do three separate dates which is something you know i like to do spontaneous things and she was able to do the same thing she's able to keep up with me which is amazing when i met his family they were so open and welcoming like mine you know and they're very family oriented so i just felt nothing but love and so like I think that was a turning point for me was just like meeting his family and Mila and, and, and everything and you know and from also 
he wanted to like meet my family and hang out with my family. So that was very important for me with someone who I didn't feel like I had to drag to family events, but someone who rather would want to or say like, hey, we haven't hung out with your family in a while. That was key. I think I was in Kansas and we had been, we'd been talking for quite a while, but one of the nights it was just like we didn't want to get off the phone with each other. And I think we ended up actually falling asleep with FaceTime on. I wish that he has a really good day uh, for a wedding day. I wish there's no stress. I want him just to have fun and be happy. I would like to say something before the wedding. Just breathe. Just breathe. It's so happy.